one. Perfect. Okay. So I just want to welcome you all to this um, workshop. It's the Huntsman Experience Workshop. We started doing the workshop a few years ago because we felt like it was a better way to reach all the students at one time or one or two or three times so that we could give you information about the Huntsman School of Business so there's no questions about um, your progress through your degree, your accounting specific degree. And then we also have Nate Jepson here today who's our career coach, so you get a chance to hear from him. Questions are very welcome because we all learn from each other that way too. So I will do a lot of talking, but if you do, if you have a question, raise your hand or put something in the chat and I'm happy to address it. Okay, so this is your team. That's myself, Myra there when I have oh, longer hair. You need to share. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Let me come here, nope. Sorry. Share my screen. Now open up this one. one. This one, no? Go to the little, the little. This one. Yeah bigger <laughs> this is why Nate's here share there we go okay okay we will get started again everybody you can can you see my screen now and it should yeah. sorry I need to push this down and there's my PowerPoint can everybody see my PowerPoint now thank you thank you thank you okay let me get this out of the way. Awesome. Okay. Now we'll go on to the next slide. If it'll let me. There we go. Okay. Um, so I am Myra, and I've been um, the advising, advising for the accounting department for two years now. And um, I just have to tell you, the accounting department is super great to work with. Um, in general, I don't have students come and complain to me about their professor or the this or the that. Like, students are really give me really good feedback about the program. So I hope you have a good experience here as well. Um, this QR code is a code that you can use to um, make an appointment with me, or you can go onto the huntsman.usu.edu website and um, find me find me on there and make an appointment if you need to. And then this is Nate Jensen, our career coach, and I'll let him introduce himself in a few more minutes. We do have statewide advisors. So if you're watching this screen, take notice of the um, locations for your advisors. Um, sad but true, our Logan campus has more offerings for classes than our statewide. So make sure you're working closely with your statewide advisor to make sure you're getting the classes you need in the semester that you need. And they're, they've all been here longer than I have. So they're excellent resources for you. Mm, we got something in the chat. Have you seen yeah, that? Okay, oh. we're good. Okay. So when you make an appointment with me and you come to the um, you come to our office area, we need you to be there on time, and that allows us to be able to not make our next appointment late and our next appointment late and push everyone later. I schedule appointments thirty minutes apart so that we have time to cover everything you need to talk about. So if you're more than 10 minutes late, our receptionist is gonna ask you to reschedule. Um, and that's that's just kind of a way to respect my time and your time and other students' time as they've, they have appointments after you. So please be aware of that. Um, when you email me, I really, really need you to use your student email account. The university has asked me to Keep your information private. You've probably heard of FERPA rules and FERPA laws. And so if you email me from your Gmail account, I'm really not supposed to answer with your schoolwork questions to a Gmail account. They really want us to use the USU account. Um, if you forget and you do email me from your Gmail, I'm going to ask you to confirm your A number and just make sure that you are who I'm talking to. But if you could just remember, even if you're using your ag email account, please include your A number because that's my key to look you up as quick as possible instead of having to search your name and scroll for you and things like that. So just as a big favor, please use your email in all of our conversations. Okay, so some of you may have heard about the Huntsman Freshman Academy. It's Business 1000. This is a new class started last fall and it is for incoming Huntsman freshmen only. So if you're a transfer student, 
if you are transferred from somewhere else on USU and you are not a freshman, meaning your first or second semester, you do not need to take this class. I know there was some confusion about that when we started in the fall and in the spring. So just wanted to clarify that. Um, in the classroom, so your minimum grade requirements are set by USU. I'm gonna make this a little smaller. So um, you need to have 120 credits to graduate. So a really good benefit of meeting with me is I'm always mindful of that because you can get through your um, accounting program and still not have 120 credits. And that's where if we know this a year in advance or three semesters in advance, we could talk about possibilities of a minor. We could talk about general education classes. If you're just interested in something, we just have to get you up to the 120 credits to make sure you graduate on time. The rest of these distinctions here are all listed on your degree work, so I won't read them. I'm sure you, you can read them and see them, but if you need a, a check, just look at your degree works page. Um, one thing that's important as well is you do need a, a 2.5 GPA overall, whether it's the minor, the major, anything like that. Now for um, the business acumen, you're probably aware of this. All of the business acumen classes do need to have a C or better. If you get a C minus, you will have to retake the class. And so I, it's sad but true sometimes that happens and I just don't want it to be a surprise to you. You do need to have a C or better in the business acumen courses. Um, for accounting majors only, the minimum, uh, you do need the C for the acumen courses, but specific to accounting 2010, you need to have a B or better. Um, the accounting department wants you to have a really strong foundation in accounting before they let you loose into the upper division classes. They, they really want you to have a good foundation in accounting 2010. Um, and whoops, all of your, all of your, um, Accounting specific courses, anything with the ACCT must have a minimum GPA of 2.5. Now that's a little different than your acumen classes where you have to have that solid C or higher. I don't put a minimum grade on there. You can have an A in one class and a C minus in another, but as long as you're at that 2.5 GPA, it's all okay. You're gonna be fine. No need to retake the class. If you ever wonder about retaking a class, email me first, okay? And I'll take a look at it and we'll, we'll decide together what, what your best course of action should be. Okay, so navigating degree works. I hope you have all been using degree works and are familiar with it. Um, I just wanted to show you a couple of um, features that you may not be aware of this is just a mock student uh, GPA. So don't think you're getting anybody's FERPA protected information here. Okay. So um, one, let me think what's the best thing to do. Okay. Let me show you how to use this what if feature. Um, a lot of students like to get on to degree works and think, well, what if I had a minor in like data analytics um, or, or anything else? What you wanna do is, is use this what if feature, it's kind of right below your um, A number. Put in the current catalog year, because if we change your major or add a minor, it's gonna be this catalog. Then you're going to come here, and if you hit B, slide down to Bachelor of Science. Every major and minor in the Huntsman School of Business is a BS, is Bachelor of Science. And then if your major is accounting, Let's see, say we wanted to do a minor in data analytics, you can put your what if scenario in there and then hit process. This is super helpful because then it changes your degree works to that major and minor. So here are the, here's the information I showed you on a, an earlier screen. Here are your gen eds, your depth education, but here's where you would see the major in accounting. These are the business acumen courses. Here are your accounting courses. Now you'll notice that in accounting, it's not just a checklist of the classes you need to take. The reason why we don't have a checklist anymore is because we now offer a dual major in accounting and finance. And this allows us to have a student take six accounting classes. You'll see one, two, three, and nine credits or six classes in accounting. And these two here could be finance classes. They kind of double dip. So then when you're, look, if you're looking at your finance major, 
if you want the dual major, you take six finance classes and two of your accounting classes satisfy the rest of the finance major. So if anybody's interested in that, please email me. I'd be happy to explain how that would work for you. Um, here is a box that's gonna calculate your GPA. That needs to be 2.5 or higher. So always at a glance, you're gonna know what that GPA is for your ACCT prefix classes. And then here's what the minor in data analytics looks like. So just for fun, this one is a business acumen class. And then you would have two, three, four more classes and you'd finish the minor in data analytics. This is just a what if to just kind of show you how this feature works. The other thing I like students to be aware of is just up here, these little dots that nobody ever looks at or uses, you can find a GPA calculator. Um, and this one is help, helps you kind of calculate your GPA if you want to bring it up, what kind of grades you need to have. Here's a term calculator. If you were registered for, let's say, five classes, this would be populated. And if you say, okay, I've got a an A or a B, a B, and I think I'm gonna get a C, what's that gonna do to my GPA? It's populated in there and it will show you what that will look like. So just some, some good tools right there. The last thing I wanna show you is the plan tab. It's at the top here where my mouse is. Um, we make, this is where I'll make a plan for you. Like we can plan a semester, we can plan a year, we can plan through graduation together. So if you put, uh, I'll make a plan, I usually just call it accounting. And here you can see we can put in like fall 24, summer 25. If you want to add a term, um, we can add a term, spring 25. Maybe that's not in order. Okay. So, and then to add the courses, you can slide over here, come down to courses, pick the term you want to populate. And then you could put in, maybe you want to take 3110 that semester. Now hang on and make sure you highlight it. And then you can hit save and it populates the semester you want to use. So this is a great tool. I don't have to be the one to use this. You're welcome to use this and play around with this as well. And if you like this plan, let's say we've made a plan for three semesters. If you want to make changes and you say, well, what if I added a minor in finance or a minor in something? And I want to see how those classes would fit. You can come up here and save a copy come back to the plan list and now you can open the second plan and you can call it accounting slash minor you know accounting with the minor you can add in classes yourself and see how that would work so these are some really great planning features that you're welcome to use um i'm going to go ahead and delete this one out um any questions on degree works or any help on that um do you see anything in the chat okay all right Please feel free to ask questions as needed. Okay, um, here we go. These are the minors that the Huntsman School of Business offers. We offer 21. Um, some of the, the two most popular minors that we have with accounting is data analytics and finance, but a lot of students are choosing the dual major in finance and, and not doing the minor because it's about the same amount of credits anyway to get the dual major that looks a little better on the resume. Um, but you can, you are welcome to look through any of these other ones if you have other interests and add on a minor. Just want you to be aware that they're there, but you do not have to have a minor. Um, a dual major, you don't have to have a dual major. A degree in accounting is wonderful, so don't feel like any pressure to take a minor or anything else. So we have our start desk, which is located on the Logan campus um, between our Eccles Business Building and the Huntsman School of Business to kind of a breezeway between there. And we have students that sit there during two and four, two and two and two, no, 10 and two. Nine and two. Nine and two. Okay, it's not my responsibility, so I forgot. <laughs> between nine and two. And those student employees, we've trained all through the summer to be able to answer your questions. So if you're having a hard time getting into an appointment with me, or you're having a quick registration question, something like that, and I haven't got your email yet, you're welcome to stop at the start desk and ask any questions. Right now, is it the whole week we're offering um, resume updates? I think that'll be an assignment for business 3200. Is that going on right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, if you haven't taken that yet, you will need it. And we it's just a free service. They're trained and ready to help you update your resume. So they have a lot of good helps. Even if you come into our center, 
um, there's somebody at the front desk, ask your question there. Don't feel, um, don't, don't feel like you don't have any help because we have a lot of resources for you. Okay, so beyond the classroom, I'm gonna turn it over to Nate Jepson. Um, hi, my name is Nate Jensen. Um, I see some familiar faces on Zoom and in here, uh, but if you don't know already, the Huntsman School does have a career coach that's assigned to every single major. And this is a real benefit to the Huntsman students because at, at the university-wide, you may already know this, they have one career center called the Career Design Center. And you're welcome to go over there, but there's no one that specializes in business there. Uh, that's all in-house here, but they have like one coach that's over all of the College of Humanities, one coach that's over all of engineering and all the majors. And so we're very lucky to have four in-house career coaches. I'm the only coach over all of accounting. So accounting get, gets me. I specialize in this. Uh, I have been doing this for about five years. I also have some background um, in careers for finance and economics. If you do end up doing the dual major, I can give a little bit of advice there as well, but we have a whole separate coach over economics and finance, another coach over marketing and international business, another coach over all of management, data analytics, information systems. So wherever you are in the school, you've got a career coach to help you plan out your career. So beyond the classroom, we want this part of this presentation because these are things that we are sharing with every new student that comes in to see us all the time. Unfortunately, some students wait until maybe their senior year to come in and be like, oh, I didn't know we had a career coach. I'm looking for a job because I'm graduating this semester. So they come in and see me. And I'm like, you're about two to three years behind the times of like what you need to do to prepare for getting a job, right? And that's very discouraging for people. So we made it a part of this workshop where every single new student coming into the business school now knows. So if you didn't know before, now you do. So we do not want in the Huntsman School for you to consider this to be a 120 credit experience for you. Because sometimes that's how it feels. You're like, I wanna graduate, I wanna get my degree and move on. That's why I'm in school. Let's be done with it. We want this to be more holistic approach where you're getting every resource that you need so that when you enter the workforce, you're not unprepared, okay? Or if you don't even know how to get into the workforce because that degree does not do it automatically for you. You have to put in that work and there's a lot you can do to prepare in advance. So whether you're here on campus or you're uh, at an on-site an on remote site or um, regional campus, you can take advantage of a lot of our resources that we have. The first resource, by a show of hands, um, I'll open up this just for a second, by a show of hands from those in Zoom and in the class, how many of you are in the Huntsman, welcome, or Huntsman Experience Canvas course? If you don't know, that's okay too. Okay, thank you, Zoom people. Um, this is a course that we invite everyone to. So if you're not sure, check on your Canvas dashboard and see, do I have the Huntsman experience? There's another Canvas course I'm gonna mention in just a minute, but this one we invite every new Huntsman student into, whether you're a freshman or you're a transfer student or coming from outside of the university or an internal transfer student coming from one of the other colleges, everyone gets invited to this. Again, this is a way that we can offer you all the tips and tricks and things to accomplish before it's too late. And these are all things that successful students have done that have placed in really high uh, paying and successful careers. Such as, so, so like if you go into this course, you'll see that there's assignments. This is, does not go against your transcript. This is not graded in that terms. Um, a lot of students will reach out to us at the end of the semester freaking out because they're like, I have this assignment or this course on my canvas. I didn't know about, I didn't even think about it. And now it's saying everything is due. 
what's going to happen since I didn't turn anything in. Nothing. It, it's all just like you choose into this it's volunteer base. But when you look at some of those assignments, you'll see that there are points associated with those. Those points are kind of like a game of like we've gamified this uh, experience so that you can earn points and get on leaderboards. If you get on the leaderboard for the Huntsman experience, so all the new students for this semester, we actually send those leaders of each department. So accounting, we'll have a leaderboard strictly for accounting. I send that leaderboard to the department head of accounting. And I say, just so you know, these are like the students that are doing all these assignments. Some of the assignments include like updating your resume, meeting with your career coach, meeting with your advisor, attending uh, the workshop, and you get points for doing all of those things. So not only do you get sent to the department head, but if you're the leader of that, that month, we'll actually give you some Huntsman swag. We have like a portfolio that we give the leaders, the top like two people in the course of that month, we give them that. So it you do get some stuff coming out of that as well. Um, I always recommend that you do this. I love seeing accounting majors as like the top of the list for the whole college, uh, bragging rights in, in the office, right? So uh, do your best. But again, this isn't busy work. This isn't just something that's like, we want you to do because we want to make sure you have extra things on your plate. Like, no, like you're gonna have to get a resume done eventually. You might as well get something started now. It's gonna serve you that much more later on, okay? So that's like the first resource that we have for more outside of the classroom. The other one is the Dare Mighty Career Course. So again, I'm gonna, by a show of hands, how many of you recognize the Dare Mighty Career Course? Maybe, <laughs> yes. Uh, again, go and check, thank you everyone on Zoom. Go and check on your Canvas dashboard, make sure that you have it, make sure your notifications are turned on for this. This is hard, you guys have a million notifications from all your other classes that you're taking right now, any assignment and announcement, but this is really, really pivotal for your career, future career success. Because in the Dare Mighty Career Canvas course, there's two components to it. One is an assignment and module course. If you look at the modules, you'll see it's categorized by kind of things that you need to do to develop in your career. So it'll have like job search resources. It will have a resume and cover letter resources. It will have interview resources. Again, you do not have to do any of those things. It's just a resource as a tool for you to so that you benefit from it. Um, it doesn't go against your transcripts, no grades. I don't follow up with everyone being like, you haven't logged in recently. I don't, it's just, you, you get on if you need that resource. The second component of it though, is the announcements. And this is where I want you to have those notifications turned on because when I have students come in to see me as a career coach, one of the number one questions I get is, can you help me find a internship? And it's not like I just know exactly what your situation is. I know where you want internships. I know what field in accounting you want. I don't know any of that kind of stuff. So it's, I can't just reach in my pocket and pull out an internship for you. But that's kind of what students expect when they come into my office. Instead, I'm the first place I'm gonna send you, and there's a few places that you can find these, these internship opportunities, but the first place is the Dare Mighty Career Announcements. Go into the announcements and you'll see a few different sections on there. You'll see general announcements of like, what's happening in the, the school, the college, the business school specifically, but I don't put every announcement that's in the count the calendar. You can look in the calendar and see everything. Just the things that I think accounting majors would probably be interested in or benefit from. I then have things like accounting club specific, and I'll talk about those clubs. I put in things that are accounting firm activities. A lot of accounting firms are doing activities right now and events that you wanna take advantage of now because they stop doing that later on in the semester. I put those all in the announcement so that you have it all there at a glance. If you keep scrolling down, and this is where it's 
important for you to find internships. I list a handful of internships that I've gone in to Aggie Handshake, filtered and found that I think these would be beneficial for the students. Some are public accounting, some are managerial accounting, where they're like internal accounting for a business. And then I also put full-time jobs in there for those that are in that place where they're still looking. So before you come in, ask me, I need help finding an internship, check there first, and then I can help you if that if none of those are working out. I only look for the ones that are in Utah because that is the most common, but you can get on Aggie Handshake and find out of state opportunities as well. It's a little bit trickier, but definitely possible, okay? Any questions about the two Canvas courses that you guys are enrolled in to kind of help? Yeah. Please. How do you enroll? Okay, if you don't have, if you're not enrolled in these currently, you can, um, these are open sourced. Ooh, if you go to huntsman.usu.edu slash careers. Nope, that didn't do it. Oh, career, I put careers slash career, this will take you to our main page for career development. You scroll down, you'll see a lot of great resources here, um, including a lot of self-guided resources you can do on your own. But then you'll also notice, mm, oh, there is a link that you can just, oh, right here. So Dare Mighty Careers. You go to that and you scroll down and you'll see all the different Canvas pages and you click on that and it, it will enroll you in that course. You're also welcome to reach out to me. I'll just add you in. Even if uh, you're like not officially in accounting, I think everyone here is, but if you're not officially in accounting and you're exploring it, we can add you or you can add yourself. So if you guys are like, I'm kind of on my way out of accounting. I've taken my basic accounting courses. I'm not digging it. I'm ready to get into marketing. You can join the marketing Canvas course and start getting their announcements and things as well. Oh, so, does that answer that question? Does that help? Okay. So, so just a question. If you click on accounting, does that allow you to join both Canvas courses? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're open source, so they're or open access, so there there's no exclusivity there. Yeah, good question. Um. And we even have some some videos to help uh, with related to uh, current navigation. Okay, going back to this. Um, one other outside of the classroom resource that the school has put a lot of work into is called Focus Fridays. How many of you have heard of Focus Fridays before? Okay. Thank you, Zoom people. Appreciate your participation. You're awesome. <laughs> um, this is something that the school made a priority. So they wanted to have a day set aside in the week that was all for like professional and career development and just things that, again, were outside of the normal classroom that would help you. Um, what they had to do is they had to petition the university, the president and the like curriculum board and say, we would like to have all our upper division business classes not available on Fridays, just Monday, Wednesdays, Tuesdays, Thursdays. It took some uh, some finagling, some working, some politicking to get that done, but they were able to do it. This is awesome so that we can have like events every single Friday. But there is a challenge to this. When you start getting in your upper division classes, you now have Fridays open. So there's a huge temptation now to be like, I've got a three day week every week, right? Um, or I can go home or this is the most common thing. I can schedule work on Fridays. This is a mistake. And I see it year after year, semester after semester. I get students coming in again, those seniors, right? They didn't look into any of these resources. They come to me their senior year. They're like, hey, you know what? I really want to get into Goldman Sachs. Um, you know, I think that would be awesome. And I'm like, oh, they were, I'm like, that's perfect. They were here on Friday. They had a big event and they had the speaker here. Were you able to go to that? I'm like, no, I have work on, on Fridays. And I want you to just notice the irony 
of scheduling work on Fridays when Fridays are meant to help you find a career, right? You're in school to get a career and you're missing out on options to get a career because you want to save money to go to school. Do you see the how that's not logical? Um, but it makes sense when maybe not every Friday pertains to you. So you're like, I don't know if I really need this. My recommendation is if you have to work on Fridays, schedule them for the like afternoon evening times because most of the Focus Friday events happen from like 1030 through noon. So if you have to, that's like a, a good time to leave open for it. Um, a lot of networking can happen. You see some of these pictures on here. Uh, does anyone know what event is happening this Thursday and Friday? Thursday for accounting specific and then Friday for the school. Yes, Abby? Meet the firms is this Thursday. So meet the firms are in the spring. They're calling it like the spring career fair. They're trying to distinguish it from the spring and fall. But meet the firms is where we are going to have um, around 20 accounting firms and other businesses that are hiring accountants come on campus and they have a career fair and you dress up, you bring your resume, you come and you meet these accounting firms and you talk to them about their firms, you tell them about yourself, you see if there's options for you to get internships right now. It's a great way to explore a lot of different uh, poss possible places to work in the future. They can tell you where you fit in their like recruiting timeline. They're like, okay, you're a little bit early, come back and see us next year. That's great, take a note. Deloitte's not hiring freshmen, sophomores. They're looking more for junior, seniors, right? That's really that's really helpful. So again, that that's happening on Thursday. That's a very accounting specific activity, and that's in the evening uh, or at six o'clock um, on the fourth floor. Anyone know what's happening Friday for our focused Friday event? Anyone on Zoom now? No, no, no one. Yes, no. Okay, let's check. All right, this Friday is mock interview day. Look it up on the calendar. There's a registration link in the Huntsman calendar. It's on the Canvas course that I was just talking about with those announcements. Um, mock interview day is something we do every spring. We don't hold a normal career expo in the fall for the whole school. And so you want to take advantage of, this is not public accounting firms. So this is like, all the other uh, companies that you might be interested in working for, like General Mills, Goldman Sachs, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, we've got Keyence. Uh, these, are, these are other big names that aren't really known for accounting, but they all have accounting divisions. So if you want to do managerial accounting, you want to come to this event. It's a virtual event, so you don't need to show up in person. You sign up and you sign up for a specific time slot with one of those or multiple companies. So let's say you really want to work for General Mills. You see a general, you sign up for the event, you find General Mills, you find a time slot that works for you this Friday between nine and noon, whatever works for you, you sign up and then you'll get a link to meet with them at that time. So let's say nine o'clock rolls around, you have your General Mills time signed up. You click on the link, you get into a little video conference room or virtual room, make sure you're dressed up and they do a little mock interview with you. These are real recruiters, employees, alumni from these companies, and they will give you some of the questions that they'll probably ask in the actual interview. So this is like huge practice for you to get experience with interviewing, but also it gets you exposed to some of these companies. So you're networking, they're giving you feedback, you're taking their name down, you're connecting with them on LinkedIn, you're following up with them. Huge opportunity. Again, this is a Focus Friday event, okay? And this is available to uh, students that are on campus, is available to those that are in regional campuses. And so take advantage of this uh, if you're interested. Questions about this event or anything about Focus Fridays? Okay, let's talk about student involve, involvement. Who here and on Zoom are involved in one of the Huntsman School of Business Clubs? Raise your hand. We've got two in here. Zoom, who's, who's involved? Anyone involved on Zoom? Taylor, 
Nice. Awesome. Anyone else? Alex, you involved? No? Okay. So um, I'm just going to show you, this is just for the Huntsman School of Business. We've got dozens of clubs. I'm just kind of scrolling through so you can see them real quick. What you'll notice about all these clubs is that they are usually associated with some department or major. And so you have like pro sales, it's associated more with the marketing and sales department. You don't have to be a marketing student to join pro sales. If you wanna get into investment banking, you don't have to be a finance student to go into investment banking club, but that's their focus. And these clubs, these are catalysts for your career development and career placement. The two finance clubs, um, Abby, what club are you a member of? Abby is a member of IMA. IMA is a club specifically for manage, managerial accounting, but you don't have to be like on the track to be in managerial accounting. Are there a lot of uh, public accounting students in that club? Yeah, it, the reason that a lot of students join IMA is because it's a little bit easier to get into initially as a new student. They don't have requirements that you have to be in upper division classes. Um, and so you can get leadership opportunities in there. They have speakers come in. They do little trips around the valley. Um, awesome club to join. If you don't know any club to join, join IMA. And you can also join once you get into your upper division classes and you are wanting to be a public accountant or get your CPA, join Beta Alpha Psi as well. There's a little bit more strict guidelines to apply and to get in but it looks really good on a resume if you're ever applying to a public accounting firm. I guarantee most of the partners at the firm you apply to have been members of Beta Alpha Psi. It's not a fraternity or a sorority. It looks kind of like that. It's just like a net national society. Um, we are one of the longest running uh, accredited Beta Alpha Psi chapters in the US. Um, they, are, they go to competitions. You can get funding to travel, again, leadership opportunities. They're doing the VITA, uh, Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, where they're helping uh, middle to low wage income earners do their taxes right now, which looks so good on a resume, right? Like these are the kind of things you want to get involved with as soon as possible. Those are the two main accounting clubs, but you can join any of them. I would give a big plug for Business Council. I'll, I'll plug it to you. I'll plug business ambassadors. I'm I'm personally the advisor of the business council. So I, I know a lot about business council. This is like the student government within the business school. Um, but you can apply to that. You can actually run for Senator. Elections are coming up pretty soon. So if you wanna run, you gotta get your name in now, but you can join business council. So once a Senator is elected, they will then choose a business council and you apply like a job. With business ambassadors, this is more of like you're talking to freshmen uh, or high school students coming in to the business school and de de deciding if they want to come to USU and join the business school. And so you're doing a little bit more recruiting with business ambassadors. Business council is more of handling like current involvement, current needs that are happening with students here right now. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So if you're a statewide student or at a regional campus, Make sure you talk to your advisor about getting involved because a lot of these clubs do mostly in-person activities and um, meetings. There are some that might do have a virtual component to it. A lot of these clubs have like a Canvas course or a module. So, um, and for all of you, whether you're a regional campus or not, um, every club has a MyUSU portal. So if you want to look up their information, you can go just like students and you can go student club or you can go to my USU and look up the club specifically and join their, their portal on there as well. Thanks, Myra. I appreciate that. Any other questions about getting involved? There's hundreds of other clubs over at USU. Anyone involved in any other club? What other club, Abby? Navigators. What do you do at the Navigators Club? Uh, 
Awesome. So Navigators is a Christian club with service opportunities, meetings. That's awesome. Very cool. So lots of clubs over there. Intramurals, get involved with intramurals if you really love sports and athletics. Um, there's a snow club. If you haven't gotten enough snow, right? There's a club for it. All right. Any other? Yeah. So there are beyond just the normal clubs. If you go to students and you see extracurricular, these are all like the centers that they usually have a club associated with them. Like the e-club or the entrepreneurship club is associated with the entrepreneurship center. Uh, Covey Fellows are part of the Covey Leadership Center. So the, there's a lot of different centers that you can get involved with. Um, econ and Finance students join the CDO as fellows. But specifically, there are like global learning opportunities for you where you can travel in the school and you can get scholarships for these or you can get subsidized um, experiences where you don't have to pay as much. There's also the SEED program with, that's within the Entrepreneurship Center. Here they have SEED, Small Enterprise Education Development, where you actually go and you consult in third world countries for entrepreneurs. So I, you can go like to the Philippines, right? And there's like people there that are trying to start their own business maybe uh, like starting up like a food stand or something, you go in as a consultant with your knowledge of business and you can help them maybe with accounting, right? Help them do their budget and their bookkeeping, which they might not know how to do, right? That you can actually help them be successful. This is a world renowned experience, number one in the USA. I mean, like people know about seed and it looks really good on a resume as well. And it gives you international experience uh, as well. Okay. And there's more. There, there's so much that we haven't even covered, but I just want you to know they do exist. Check them out. Look them up. Come to Myra and I to ask for, for opportunities and we'll show you. Uh, we're just going to give a little plug for Your Story Matters. This is an initiative that we wanted to make to show successful students accomplishing things and showing those that are just starting in the school. And so I want you to just look look out for uh, videos and opportunities or and things that we are posting from other students so that you can see uh, you can dream big. You can dare mighty things and you can accomplish these, these things. And there are students just like you doing amazing things right now. And that kind of leads us into setting your own goals and creating a vision for what you want to accomplish. So we've this is this portion of the workshop. We want you to get out like either a pad of paper, a, your notes app, something to, to write down some goals. And you're going to be putting these goals into a final survey uh, that I'm going to have right after this slide that gives you credit for attending this workshop. Um, so I want you to write these down. When we're talking about goals, we can break them up into three different categories, short term, semester long and long term. I want you to have uh, a handful of short-term goals, a handful of semester goals, and at least one long-term goal written down. And you will be putting these into the survey. So make sure you're, you're putting something down right now. You can see the examples on the screen. Short-term goals are something really simple that you can do in the next few weeks. Set up an appointment with me as your career coach. Set up an appointment with Myra if you haven't already. Um, we're at Focus Friday, say, I'm going to go to meet the firms this Thursday. I'm going to sign up uh, for the mock interview day. That's a short-term goal. Thinking semester-wide, you can be like, I'm not just going to join a club. Maybe join a club could be a short-term goal, but I'm going to attend at least three club meetings would be a semester-long goal rather than just attending one Focus Friday event, I'm going to attend a handful of Focus Friday events. 
GPA goals are perfect for semester long goals. Try to come up with at least three short term goals, three semester goals for yourself. It doesn't have to just be the, these are examples. It could be make a new friend. Go skiing every Saturday, not Friday. <laughs> but I want one, at least one long-term goal. With long-term goal, I want you to dream big. One of the biggest problems that I have seen since working at the Huntsman School is students thinking small. They're like, yeah, and there's nothing wrong with some of these goals. It's just, it's the energy behind it, right? A goal like, I'm going to go work for my mom and dad, right? Like they have a business, I'm going to school so I can learn accounting, so I can go help out with their business. There's nothing wrong with that goal if that's dreaming big for you, if that's like your ultimate plan. But if that's just a fallback, it's just something that's safe, I want you to stretch yourself a little bit. You're like, I want to go work for a Fortune 50 enterprise. I want to go work at a big four accounting firm in London, which we have three students there right now that are interning. I One example that I like to share is when I advise the finance students, I had a student come in and I was asking her a little bit about what her ultimate plans were. And she was listing off some of the like companies that recruit from at U USU. But she seemed like she wasn't really excited about anything that she was telling me. She's like, oh yeah, I'm thinking of applying here and I'll apply here. And I was just kind of like, you don't seem very like excited about that. Like, well, they recruit here and my friend is there and I think it would be good. Like, well, is there, is there a place that you would love to work for? Like, well, if I could choose anywhere, I would love to work for Disney. You're like, I've been a Disney fan my whole life. We go to the parks. My family goes to the parks every, every year. I think that would be amazing, but it's a little bit beyond my reach. I'm like, it's not beyond your reach. Like we have alumni at Disney. Let's get you in Disney. And she was like, really? Yeah, why not? <laughs> like, what are you going to lose by trying to get into Disney, right? Like have, a, like have a better network and a better resume that you could get into another place. Like you have nothing to lose. Let's go for it. So we looked on LinkedIn. We found the alumni that were at Disney. I gave it to, I gave it to her. I was like, you, you contact these people. You say this. You follow up with them, you do these things, you update your resume in the way that they're telling you to, you ask them for additional contacts to reach out to, you will find a job at Disney. She's like, okay, and she did it. She was like contacting the people, setting up phone calls with them, uh, meeting with them, asking for additional like references. And then there was a job app opportunity for her to apply to, she applied. She followed the advice of all her network and she got the job. She's now in Florida working for Disney in their like parks and entertainment division. Um, pretty amazing. When she, when she emailed me, she's like, you will never believe where I just got offered a job. Uh, I wasn't surprised, right? Like you can dream big and go anywhere you want. Uh, in fact, I had a conference that I attended out in, in uh, Florida and I set up a time to meet with her. Some of my colleagues and I went out to dinner with this, this former student and just got to hear about her experiences and the inner workings of finance at Disney right now. It was really cool. So you have, you have your goals. You're dreaming big. Now it's time to fill out the survey. This survey is um, just going to ask you about this workshop. Basically, do you understand and did you get everything that we covered in, in this, uh, this workshop? 
if you came in late, make sure that you sign our, our form and that we give you anything that you might have missed. But then there will be a, a place in the survey to put in your goals. So make sure you put in that and then go all the way through every slide of the survey. Some people will end, but make sure you click next until it says, thank you for completing the survey because that kicks over an email to Myra and she knows it to give you credit. Question. Questions, yeah. Any questions on Zoom? So I have that QR code. There is also a URL, URL link as well if you need it. Hey, go ahead and complete the survey. And that really is the end of our workshop. So if you have additional questions, Meyer and I are gonna hang out for a minute. I've got a 4.30 appointment, so I'm gonna run off at 4.30, but email us if you have any additional questions or concerns. If you can't get into those Canvas courses, let me know. I can get you in. Okay, those that are on Zoom, I hope you were able to get this survey link. I'm going to close Zoom down and say goodbye to you guys. Thank you all for joining. Appreciate you logging in, turning on your cameras. I know that's not always comfortable, but thank you. And we'll talk you guys talk to you guys later.